Grace be to you in peace from God our Creator, Redeemer, and Life giving Spirit. Amen. It's always a hard thing to hear these kinds of readings and then say the Gospel of the Lord. And I can see by your faces that you wonder too, is this really good news? Our Old Testament lesson was all about choices. And so I chose to preach from our Old Testament lesson rather than <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've been watching the Winter Olympics at Sushi as much as I can this week. Any more? Any more Olympic junkies? Good. Because on Thursday night, two remarkable events happened. Now, of course, the entire Olympics are remarkable events. I mean, I can almost see death on the slopes as those people were going over those nobles, all of those athletes who were at the peak of their performance capability, who move with such grace and agility and amazing strength. The Olympics by themselves are remarkable. But this Thursday, two things happened that also exhibited some amazing qualities, qualities of wisdom and of courage. There were very different choices that were made, but important nevertheless. The first one was when Evgeny Plushenko, this amazing Russian legend, who had already won three Olympic medals before the Sochi Games, decided that he had to drop out for medical reasons. He had injured his back before, and in his practice run had injured it more and decided, he made a choice that it was better to stop than to continue and injure himself more. That was pretty smart. The other skater, American Olympic skater par excellence, Jeremy Abbott, he had also won Olympic medals, but on Thursday, as he began his routine, he fell really hard on the first jump. He landed on his hip and skated into, slid into the side wall. It was excruciating to watch. And he actually lay there on the ice for a few seconds. And I think those of us who are watching wonder, is this over for him? But after he lay there, he actually got up and he continued his program in the most amazing way. He could have chosen to stay down when he fell, but instead he chose to get up and to keep on going. And the audience there erupted with such an ovation because they wanted to applaud his courage. Although their choices were so much more spectacular than the choices you and I have to make, and so much more visible to the world, every day of our lives, you and I have to make choices, hundreds of choices. Sometimes they're small, what am I going to wear today? Sometimes they're pretty big. Do I get this lump that I found checked out? Or do I just let it go, hoping that if I don't pretend, if I pretend, it'll go away? All of us, every day, have to make choices. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, but from the youngest to the oldest, and all of us in between, choices, that's the stuff of life. Our Old Testament lesson today is all about choices. It's about the choice that's set before the people of Israel pertaining to their relationship with God. And the scene is the plains of Moab just before the Israelites are about to cross the River Jordan and enter into the promised land of Canaan. Moses, their strong spiritual leader, is speaking here. And Moses has been with these people for a long time. He's journeyed with them through the wilderness for 40 long and weary years. He's heard all of their grumbling and mumbling and complaining against God, as any good pastor would do. But 40 years. 
years. This was a long tenure, like pastors used to stay. <laughs> Moses, he was their prophet speaking God's word to them. He was their priest praying for them to God, asking God to be gracious and merciful to them when they were so wayward. Now they're on the edge of the land, this new land flowing with milk and honey that God has promised to give them, and Moses can't go with them. God has already re revealed to Moses that he can't enter into the promised land with the people. So Moses tries to prepare them by giving his final sermon to them. And our lesson from Deuteronomy is part of Moses' final sermon to his people. He says, see, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord, by walking in his ways and observing all his commandments, then you will live and become numerous in the land where the Lord your God will bless you. But if your heart turns away and you turn to idols and other gods, I declare to you that you will perish. You will not live long in the land that you are crossing to enter and possess. Moses was speaking for God, and he makes the people's choice crystal clear, life or death, prosperity or adversity. There was no in-between, no gray area in this decision, like there sometimes are in life. And did you hear the emphasis on today? Four times in these five verses, Moses stresses the importance of choosing to listen to God today. This was not a choice to be put off till tomorrow, like Scarlett O'Hara might have done. God wanted ultimate allegiance and loyalty, not tomorrow when it was convenient for the people, not when they were in a crisis and needed God. This was a choice not to be made on the people's terms, but on God's terms. And God is a God not only of yesterday and tomorrow, but a God of today. And today is when God wants us to listen and choose. Today, said Moses, is the day to make a choice. And the choice is choose life. What is life for the people? Life is loving God. Life is having our hearts open to God and God's will for our lives and what we want. Life is like our old revised standard version of the Bible said, cleaving to God. Cleaving to God means holding on so tightly it were as if you and God were bound together by super glue. Cleaving means not letting go when the times get so hard and you feel like you're pressed on every side by situations or circumstances that you can't control. Cleaving means not giving up when you feel like life has given up on you. Cleaving is what one of our Family Promise members did. I got to embrace her this morning. After hearing her story, the last time she was here, she cleaved to God in the promise that even though she and her five-year-old asthmatic child and her 18-year-old son were homeless on the streets of Newark for two weeks, that God hadn't give, given up on her. She clinged to God, she cleaved, and on Tuesday, she's going to move back into a home with her husband, and her family, and she's going to begin a new life. Cleaving, holding fast to God, that's the choice that God wants all of us to make. Choose life, God said to the people through Moses, so they wouldn't have to, have to suffer the consequences of choosing death. God pleaded with the people through the prophets, and sometimes they listened, and like us, so many times, they didn't. 